Today's Ask the Doctor segment is all about heart attacks in winter, uh, something we really need to hear about right now. Dr. Uh, David Fino from uh, Shelby Baptist Medical Center here to join us. Give us uh, your call, 741-9272. Before we get to our callers, I was just asking you, is there um, a, a connection with the holidays? And you say there really is. Uh, absolutely, Janet. So, so during the holidays, we definitely see a higher incidence of cardiovascular disease. We see problems with people's blood pressure, chest pain, uh, probably stress related. There's also even a term that cardiologists use called holiday heart syndrome, referring to more heart failure admissions in the hospital around this time. A lot of it's diet related, but certainly the stress factors and tr true de novo coronary disease blockages of the arteries occur more frequently this time mm -hmm. of year. So be aware of that uh, and around your family. There is a, a great deal of stress going on. Let's go uh, straight to uh, some of our uh, callers here. We have Linda from Birmingham. Uh, Linda, what's your question? What's happening when your heart takes off beating too hard? Hmm. So the question that Linda is uh, asking about is what happens when the heart is beating too hard? And cardiologists have a fancy word for this. This is palpitations. This is a subjective feeling that uh, many times patients will say my heart is beating out of my chest. There's a couple of things that are thought to happen and it's different patient to patient, but in general beats that occur too early cause an unusually long filling of the heart on the next heartbeat, meaning that the next heartbeat is significantly harder than the one that came before. Now there are several triggers for this, things like caffeine, we mentioned mm -hmm. stress related to the holidays a moment ago, and certainly failure to take your medications, especially things like beta blockers this time of year. So usually that's what those are. If they persist, please definitely call a cardiologist. It can mean a sign of a more serious thing like an arrhythmia. Okay. If it persists, if it doesn't, if you just feel this uh, flutter or whatever and it goes away, should, should you say, well, that's all right or not? I do. I have a 15 minute rule with my patients. Things that last longer than 15 minutes, I'll ask okay. them to please come in and see us. I'll definitely tell them that if it's associated with chest pain, shortness of breath, and the cardinal symptom that gets a cardiologist out of bed is passing out or syncope. Any of these things happen, it doesn't matter the duration. Less than 15 minutes, we can probably see you again on the next scheduled visit. More than 15 minutes, give us a call. Okay, some good uh, guidelines there. Our next caller, Lori from Summerton. Uh, Lori, give us your question. Uh, yeah, my husband had to go to the emergency room. Um, they found out he had AFib. Um, because of situations, uh, he wouldn't let them admit him. He came back home, they gave him cardism. And it, I guess what you call it, is it made it get back in rhythm. That's what they told him. He hasn't had a problem since then, but how close is that to a heart attack or what should he do? Excellent question. So the caller is asking about atrial fibrillation, which cardiologists very often abbreviate AFib. Related to the first question where the caller asked about palpitations, a palpitation that lasts longer than about 15 minutes is very likely to be atrial fibrillation, which is just referred to as an irregular heartbeat. Many cardiologists will say you have this irregular heartbeat. So the first part of the question that the caller is asking, Cardizem is a medication to help slow the heart rate down and very often it'll convert a bad or pathological rhythm such as atrial fibrillation into a normal rhythm. The second part of the question is very important. The ca caller asked whether or not it could be related to a heart attack or possibly a structural problem with the heart. The answer is absolutely yes and most cardiologists will definitely get additional testing for the heart such as an echo echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart as well as possibly a stress test or even a cardiac catheterization to try to investigate what might be the cause of the atrial fibrillation. There are five or six other things, thyroid, electrolytes, dietary intake, new onset heart failure, all of which can be associated with atrial fibrillation. Uh, my message being, it's great that you sought care with the emergency department. Definitely follow up with a cardiologist so we can wrap up that answer for you and your family. Okay. Dr. Fino, thank you for being with us. Uh, bottom line on all this, if you if you feel something funny, don't hesitate to call. They might tell you it's okay, but go ahead and call the doctor. Absolutely, Jen. All right, Dr. Fino from uh, Shelby Baptist Medical. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Well, we heard how world leaders react.